Hi, I'm Christina May, the online pastor at World Harvest Church in Enid, Oklahoma. You're about to hear a spirit-filled message from our pastor. So grab your Bible, and if you're a coffee lover like me, grab a cup of coffee and get ready for a personal word that God has for you today. Hallelujah. Praise God. Well, grab your Bible, let, grab your device, and let's get into our message here this morning. Dear Heavenly Father, we thank you so much for the time that we've already had with you as we've encountered you in our worship. And now, Lord, I believe that you've got a message that you want to speak to each and every one of us that are here today, Lord God. Lord, we truly are living in interesting times. This is a time and a season that none of us foresaw coming. It's unexpected. It's unprecedented, Lord God. But Lord, in the midst of storms, in the midst of isolation, in the midst of tri trials and tribulations, <laughs> you're still King of kings and the Lord of lords. You're still good. And you want to show up and you want to show off. And Lord, I, I do believe it's even in times of struggle that you show up the biggest and the brightest. So Father, for each one that's hearing my voice right now, Lord, I pray that you give us the eyes to see what you want us to see and the ears to hear what you want us to hear today. Father, that we may gain revelation Revelation of who we are in you and who you are in us, that we may live in victory and walk in victory. In Jesus' name we pray. And everybody this morning, come on, say it loud and proud with me. Say amen. Amen. Man, I want you to open up your Bible with me or you're clicking your device to 1 Samuel chapter 17. 1 Samuel chapter 17, I'm going to take another step in the journey that we've been on in the last few weeks. Now here that's in the sanctuary, it's so good to see Many of y'all's faces, some of y'all have been seeing for the last few weeks. Some of y'all, this is your first time back. Uh, May is a transitional month for us. Each Sunday is going to look a little bit differently. I know we've got quite a few kids with us in this service. So starting next week, kids ministry will start back up again. And so uh, I appreciate our kids ministry. Y'all appreciate our kids ministry? Yeah. Amen. I appreciate our kids ministry. Uh, I do need to say this, though. Um, kids ministry, we're needing our kids workers back. So we're finding that uh, we, we need more kids ministry people. So if you would like to help with that, see Pastor Michael. Also, I want to say a big shout out to our production team. Our production team, we found out over the last few weeks, is a very important ministry of the church. Our, our production team, as many of y'all have had to join us online for the last several weeks, man, it'd be hard to do without a production team. So let's give our production team a big hand also. But this message in this series that I've been in, the Lord really stirred in my heart that it's in this time that we're living in that that we gotta make sure that we're looking forward. Forward to normal. I've heard people say, I can't wait to get back to normal. I don't know about you, but I, want, I don't wanna go backwards. I don't, go, I don't wanna go back to where I once was. I wanna go forward to what God has for me in my future. Amen? I don't wanna go back to the busyness. I don't wanna go back to the craziness. I don't wanna go back to chasing everything around. I, I, I wanna continue to press ahead. I wanna do what Paul said. I forget about what's behind and I press on to what's before. And I've been concerned over the last several weeks, like so many of us, we, we're all in this, this incredible balancing act right now. How do we balance living in fear and trusting, you know, uh, living in faith and trusting God versus the fear that we see abounding in our world? I was just reminded just this week of just the fear that's in our world right now. I mean, everybody knows what it's like right now. There's a lot of fear out there. My dad was telling me, of course, those of you that know my family know my dad pastors a church out in Guyman, Oklahoma. I've been out there for a lot of years. I've been pastoring out there. And uh, of course, if you know the current situation we're in, Guyman's a hot spot right now for COVID-19. Uh, you know, I think last I heard, Enid area's got maybe 12 or 13 active cases. They've got a couple hundred out there. I mean, there's a lot more out there because of the pork processing plant that's out there. And uh, my dad was telling me, he said the other day, he said, it's, it's amazing. Of course, my dad, uh, he's a very mature Christian man. I mean, of course, he's lived a lot of years, very discerning of spirits. He said, it's amazing. He says, you walk into Walmart out here at Guyman, he said, and you feel it hits you like a wet blanket. He said, there's the spirit that tries to grip your heart when you walk in there. And he said, it's amazing, the spirit of fear. It's raining out there. And it's just, it's really got me stirred up. And I've been bringing some, some message. We've been looking in the Old Testament about some stories of God's people who, who was in a crisis moment and how they dealt with it. And see, I believe that today that we can operate in one of two ways. We can either choose to live by faith, and when we live by faith, it brings hope and expectation for what is to come. Or we can choose to live under a spirit of fear, and fear always creates anxiety and worry and always brings intimidation. 
Now, as I get into this here today, I want you to know, first of all, I want you to know this. I am not saying that we live our life carelessly. I'm not saying that we live our life not taking precautions, okay? It's, taking precautions is okay. Taking precautions is not a sign of fear. I want you to know that. It's just wisdom. You know, I've been saying it this way. Faith is what draws us, but wisdom is what holds us. We've got to be wise. And so we've been all in this balancing act, but I am concerned of this, and it's this, that many Christians, many people in the body of Christ, they're, they're, they've gone beyond concern, they've gone beyond wisdom, and now they're living in a state of fear. Now, I'm not talking about just the COVID-19 thing. I'm talking about life. I'm talking about reports. Uh, I, again, I, I, I don't know anybody that's had COVID-19, I, or let me rephrase that, that has had outward signs of it. I am hearing that we've got a lot of world arts people that didn't know they had it, but they show the antibodies now. And it's like, so there, there could be a lot of us that had it. I don't know. I just, I'm not trying to open up a can of, of, of debate and discussion about this, but this is what I know. We have a whole lot more people dealing with real life issues outside of COVID-19 and isolation. We have a lot of people that are dealing with doctor's reports of cancer right now. People losing jobs right now. Businesses failing right now. So the, the pandemic is not a virus in itself. It's all the results of life that's happening right now. And so we have got to ask ourselves the question, how do we view this? How do we approach this time that we're living in? Okay? Listen, if you are wearing a mask today, great. I champion you in that, okay? If you're still isolating today, I cha- that's fine. There's no condemnation in that. We all got to walk out our own salvation. We all got to operate at the level of belief that we're at. So however you, wherever you're at right now, I want you to know that I want the best for you. And I don't condemn anybody. I don't condemn anybody that's not coming back to church yet. You, we've been telling about you come back on your own time frame. You come back whenever you feel like you're ready. We're one church, many locations. We don't have to all be in one building to be the church, right? I said a whole lot, and I haven't even got into my message today. So let's get into the message, all right? Let's take a look here at a very familiar story, uh, a story about God's people who faced a tremendous challenge in their life. It was a time and a season in God's chosen people, the children of Israel, where they were stuck. They were stuck in a moment of life, and they were not going forward. They were not progressing. We see the story in 1 Samuel chapter 17, probably one of the most famous stories of all the Bible. It's a story of David and Goliath, a very familiar story. But I want us to look at this story in a new light here this morning, all right? So look at your neighbor, those that are sitting in the sanctuary, tell them, get ready, it's gonna be good. Those of you watching online, slap somebody beside you, tell them, get ready, it's gonna be good. If you're by yourself, kick the dog, slap the cat, if you can find the cat, tell them it's gonna be good. In 1 Samuel chapter 17, I want us just to pick it up here in verse 16. 1 Samuel chapter 17, verse 16, for 40 days. Somebody say 40 days. For 40 days. Now, I don't know if you can relate to 40 days or not, but you think about how long is 40 days in your life. Well, 40 days ago was basically the 1st of April. For 40 days, can I say it this way? The children of Israel are in isolation. There's being forced something upon them. For 40 days, every Morning and what? Every evening, the Philistine champion, now, I love the way the New Living Translation puts this. He, he, he didn't just kind of show up and make a declaration. It says that the champion, what did he do? He, he strutted. He strutted. In other words, he was showing off in front of the Israelite army, the champion Goliath. Now, those of you that are familiar with the story, you, you, you know a little bit of the history of Goliath, but maybe just to help you to put um, Goliath back into perspective, if you've forgotten the story of David and Goliath, it was said, if you look back in verses four and five of chapter 17, where we're at here, it tells us that Goliath, that his protective coat that he wore under his armor, armor the, the coat of mail, it, it was 125 pounds, 125 pounds just for the protective armor. Now, some of y'all weigh about 125 pounds. I've got a, a row up here, probably is under 125 pounds up here. I mean, glad to be wearing one of these guys, these young adults up here on the front row. No, I'm, I'm far from 125 pounds. I know, I know the camera may, those watching may make me look 125 pounds, but I'm not 125 pounds. In fact, one of my loved brothers texted me after church last Sunday and he said, Pastor, I don't know if it's our new 55 inch TV I've got on the wall or what. He says, but you're looking pretty healthy through this thing. 
Or so I said, yeah, I believe in the full gospel, if you know what I mean. <laughs> so Goliath, just his undercoat, 125 pounds. His spear, just the head of his spear weighed 15 pounds. 15 pounds, that's big, right? Now the Bible tells us, uh, an Old Testament terminology says that he was six cubits and a span. Six cubits and a span. A, a, a cubit was basically the measurement from an elbow to the tip of your fingers there. That's, how they, that's what a cubit was. So cu- six cubits and a span uh, translated in today's time would be about nine and a half feet tall. Now, nine and a half feet tall, just to put it into perspective, what nine and a half feet tall is, basically with my five foot seven and however many centimeters I can grab a hold of more than five foot seven, that's where I am. But uh, I'm sitting on a stage that's, that's just a little over three feet tall. So on this stage, you add my stage. In other words, Goliath was probably about this tall right here. Now, just to help you put this into perspective, Alex Simmons, can I, you're sitting right here. You're looking good today. Uh, senior, get graduating. Come stand for me right here in front of me. Uh, Leslie, zoom that camera out here so you can see this. Now, turn around here. So, uh, Alex, do you know how tall you are? 5'10", 5'10", awesome. So just to put this in perspective at the height I am right now, you know, can you see a little bit difference? Now, uh, I, I am, you know, Goliath, he was probably a lot bigger than my skinny body that I've got before you here today. But, you know, just kind of look at me, you know, you can see this size difference, Goliath to little Alex. Now, Alex, you know, now we don't know how big David was. All we know about David, that when David showed up on the scene, he was always referred to as, he wasn't referred to as a young man. He was always referred to as a boy. So some scholars say, well, he was probably 16, 17 years of age. How, are you, how old are you right now? 18. 18. Awesome. Man, you're growing up on me. <laughs> and so uh, Alex here being 18 years of age. Now, I don't know if David was his size or not, but if you can kind of get a picture of this, you know, I mean... David looking up to Goliath, it's a little taller than me yet, probably another 100 pounds than I am. Don't you know that's a little intimidating? Thank you, Alex. Take your seat there, buddy. Congratulations on graduating high school. So, hey, June, June 7, June 7th, Sunday morning, June 7th, we're going to be honoring all of our graduates, okay? So you guys can mark that on your calendar on that. So Goliath here, for 40 days, this guy intimidated the children of Israel. If you'll jump down with me to verse 23 and just verse 24. Look at 1 Samuel chapter 17. 23 and 24, says, as he was talking with them, as David was talking with them, Goliath, the Philistine champion from Gath, came out from the Philistine ranks. And then David heard him shout his usual taunt to the army of Israel, verse 24. And as soon as the Israelite army saw him, how did they respond? They began to, come on, help me out, church, what? Read it with me. They began to what? Run away in fright. Goliath, it says that he taunted God's people. God's people. But he wasn't just challenging them. He was taunting them. Taunt, to taunt means this. It means to make fun of, to be little, to try to provoke. Now, listen, this is very interesting to me here because it, it, if you remember back up to verse 16, how many days did Goliath taunt and strut before the children of Israel? For 40 days. Now, he just didn't do it once a day, but how often did he do it? Come on, twice a day, every morning and every evening, 80 times the people of God, God's chosen people, had heard the same message. Every morning, every evening, they turned on the news in the morning and they heard the intimidation. They turned the news on the evening and the message didn't change. Is it okay to take that liberty in that? Now, this is kind of what's got me just a little, what were they thinking? Because the children of Israel weren't just an average race of people. They were God's chosen people. In other words, at that time frame, these were the people that had a relationship with the creator of the universe, God himself. God chose them. God appointed them. God handpicked them. But yet we find this moment where the challenge lies before them. Instead of being bold in who they were and confident in who they could be in Jesus Christ, they, they chose to live in fear and intimidation. Does that sound like anything that's going on in our world today? Come on, look at somebody beside you and tell them, I will not be intimidated. The children of Israel are God's chosen people. They're, they were being taunted. Is there anything that's taunting your life right now? Is there anything that you're facing right now that appears to be a Goliath before you? 
See, I wonder how many of us listen to the taunts of the enemy and we get paralyzed with fear that we just let it keep running in the background of our mind over and over again. Like y'all remember back on the old record player's day when you take that arm and put it on that record player and if it hit a bad spot of that record, it would just sit there and repeat again and again and again and again. That's what the taunts of the adversary are like in our life. But let me tell you, I'm here to let you know today that you don't have to let the taunts and the intimidation of the adversary dominate your life because you are a chosen generation. You are a chosen person. God loves you. God cares for you. And I don't know what you're facing. I don't know what the Goliath is that lies in your life right now, but Goliath has got to go down. Goliath has got to fall. Come on, say that with me, somebody. Say, Goliath's got to fall. What is the Goliath that stands before you here today? What happened to God's people? I tell you what happened. They got used to to living in fear. See, it's a, it's a terrible thing for a person to get used to living in fear. And I want you to know, if you're living in fear and intimidation today, you don't have to. They had forgotten that they were covenant people. They had forgotten who their daddy was. Their running from a Goliath had become their normal. What's your normal look like? But somebody showed up on the scene, a young man named David, and for David, fear was not normal. He was not conditioned to living in fear. See, David, he shows up, he hears Goliath, then he sees even his own brothers, his own family running away. He, he, he'd seen it modeled before him. And, and I'm, I'm sure he had the thought, like, what in the world is happening? What are you doing? Why isn't anybody killing this bully that's saying things against the God of our people? Let me tell you, there's a lot of fear being, being dictated to us. It's, it's coming to us. It's being thrown in our face every day. See, David, he could have let the fear put him into a place of intimidation. But David, he was used to killing things that opposed him, not surrendering to them in his life. We'll get to that in just a moment. So let's continue to move on here. In 1 Samuel chapter 17, jump down to verse 32. Verse 32 says, this was David's response. It says, don't worry about the Philistine. Now remember, big old Goliath, the big Philistine, don't worry about the Philistine. Little David, don't worry about it. He's talking to King Saul. David told Saul, David said what? I'll go fight him. Verse 33, don't be ridiculous, Saul replied. <laughs> I just wonder if Saul kind of looked over at one of his assistants and says, go get a body bag. We're gonna need one for this guy. yeah. There's no way he said you can fight this Philistine possibly. He said possibly when you're only a what? You're only a boy. And he's been a man of war since his youth. Listen to this. Many times faith sounds ridiculous to those living in fear. But see, David knew something. He knew that the fight would be unfair. Unfair not against David, but he knew that it was gonna be two against one, against Goliath. Let me tell you, if you've got a relationship with God, you're God's chosen person. Come on, you got a if you've got a relationship with Jesus Christ, let me tell you, the fight for you is not you by yourself, but God and with you makes the majority. Amen. I don't care how many comes against you, what's going on in your life. If you've got God in your boat, if Jesus is in your boat, if you've got a relationship with Jesus Christ, you're gonna make it. Come on, somebody say, I'm gonna make it. Come on, say, I'm gonna make it. Amen. Let's jump on down to verse 34. It says, but David, he persisted. He says, I have been fighting. Uh, I've been taking care of my father's sheep and goats. And he said, when a lion, somebody say a lion, or a bear, come on, somebody say a bear, comes to steal a lamb from, uh, from the flock, he says, I go after it with a club and I rescue the lamb from its mouth. He says, if the animal turns on me, I catch it by the jaw and I, man, this guy was tough. He what? I club it to death. Verse 36, he says, I have done this to both lions and bears. And he goes on and says this, I'll do it to the who now? This pagan Philistine. What's a pagan Philistine? Basically, he said, this guy doesn't have a relationship with God. He's a pagan. If he doesn't have a relationship with God and we do, he's got to go down. That's what he was saying. He said, for he has defied the armies of the living God. Isn't it interesting that David says, he says, I've taken care, talked about the, the sheep. He said, I've taken care of the lion when it came against me. I've taken care of the bear that come against me. And what did he say about Goliath? He said, Goliath's gonna be the same. 
Notice he did not say, you know what, I, I, I took care of a lion when the lion came. I, I took care of the bear when the bear came. But Goliath, ooh, this is a whole nother situation. I like David's perspective. But he said, you know what, the lion, phew. the bear, phew. so Goliath, what was David saying? You know what he was saying? This is what David was saying. He said, I had a problem with a lion arise before me, but I conquered it. He said, I had a bear-sized situation come up against me. He said, but I conquered it. God helped me conquer it. So Goliath, you know what he was saying? He's basically saying, you know what? I had some things I've conquered. This thing is just another thing. This is just another thing. This is just another problem. Because the problem I had with the lion, God took care of it. The problem I had with the bear, God took care of it. So he already knew that Goliath, he was just another thing. It was just another situation. It was just another challenge in his life. See, we tend to so many times have these, well, this was a little problem, and now I've got a big problem. Let me tell you, there's no little problems in God's eyes. There's no big problems in God's eyes. They're just all the same problem. They're all just a challenge lies before me. So if God did it before, bless God, I believe he's going to do it again in Jesus' name. Come on. If God delivered you from the lion before, and he delivered you from the bear before, listen, the Goliath that stands before you right now, God's going to deliver you from it too in Jesus' name. Come on. Somebody ought to get excited about it in this church today. Amen. It's just another thing. It's just another thing. Let me tell you, the same God that that kept me from drowning as a young boy in a river in the mountains is the same God that kept me from running into a herd of deer back in 1987 when I was going back to Oral Roberts University, south right here on Highway 51. I came down a hill, and there was a whole herd of deer come running out in front of me, and I was in a little bitty pickup at 75 miles an hour. Let me tell you, it was the same God that delivered me from that, that delivered my daughter when she was driving up from uh, Oklahoma City on Highway 74 when she was carrying Hadley in her stomach. She went off the road flipped the truck end over end three times. She should have died that day. But the same God that delivered me delivered her, that she walked away from that with just barely a scratch. It's the same God that helped us build this church with absolutely nothing. It's the same God. He killed the lion. He slayed the bear. This is just another thing. It's just another thing. It's the same God that's going to deliver you today. It's just another thing. Come on, somebody say, it's just another thing. Come on, it's just a little challenge. So if you got this thing before you, say, man, I don't know, God, yeah, you did that, you did this, but I I don't know about this. Is anything too difficult for my God? Come on, is anything too difficult for God to do? Absolutely not. It's just another thing. Amen? Jump on down to verse 41. Y'all getting anything out of this message today? 1 Samuel 17, verse 41. Verse 41, Goliath walked out towards David with his shield bearer ahead of him. Verse 42, sneering in contempt at this rudy face. There we see it again, boy. Verse 43, he said, am I a dog? He roared at David. Did you come to me with a stick? He cursed David by the names of his God. Verse 44, and Goliath is still talking. Verse 44, come over here and I'll give your flesh to the birds and the wild animals, Goliath yelled. Verse 45, But David replied, I like this. Have you ever stepped out to confront your opposition with boldness and faith? And instead of your mountain, your Goliath running in fear, suddenly your mountain starts speaking to you even louder. You ever had that happen before? I've had it happen before. I've had those moments in my life I said, I refuse to put up with this, and I step out there, and I said, this is what God's gonna do to you. Listen, it's one thing just to declare the word of God, but what are you gonna do when the mountain speaks back to you? What's gonna happen to your life when you still hear the same report back into your face? Are you gonna stand strong? Are you gonna cave in? I love what David did. I love what David did. Verse 45, David, he replied to the Philistine, you come to me with a sword, spear, and javelin, but I come to you in what? The name of the Lord of the heaven's armies the God of the armies of Israel, whom you have defied. Verse 46, today, somebody say today. Today the Lord will conquer you and I will kill you and I will cut off your head. And then I will give the dead bodies of your men to the birds and wild animals and the whole world will know that there is a God in Israel. Verse 47, hang on just a second. Verse 46, he said the whole world will know that there is a God in Israel. And it just blew up in my spirit. Where are the Davids of today? Where are the Davids of our generation? 
that are standing up and say, I believe God in miracles for miracles. I, I, I believe God for breakthrough. I believe that COVID-19 has got to bow its name, its me to the name of Jesus Christ. Where are the Davids of today? Man, let that sink in for a moment. And I want to be a David in my life. This is what I love about this story. David didn't just defeat Goliath. <laughs> he defeated him, but you know what happened to the rest of the nation of Philistine? They went after, they killed them all. It's amazing. Let's move on here. Y'all all right today? Giving you a lot to think about. Verse 47, verse 47. And everyone assembled here will know that the Lord rescues his people. Mm. But not with a sword and a spear. This is the Lord's battle, and he will give you to us. Everybody here will know that the Lord rescues. Listen, church, listen to me real close. I pray that through all this crisis time that we're in, I am so looking forward to just a move of God that is undeniable that the power of God has shown up. Whenever the mayor, uh, the, the governor, Kumo uh, of New York City said, we have done this, God didn't do this. Man, I don't know. I had a problem with him saying that. I am looking for something to happen where it's undeniable that God's power has shown up through this thing. Just like here, David said, listen, all the world, all the nation's gonna know who the true God is. Come on, anybody with me here in this place today? Come on, anybody with me here in this place today? Amen. Let me wrap up. Let me wrap up. Now, you, you'll be glad to know that I'm all halfway through my message. <laughs> you'll be happier to know I'm not going to go through it all today. Okay? Somebody took a sigh of relief right there. <laughs> David knew two things that I think we need to grab a hold of today. Two things. He knew who he was in Christ. He knew he was in God. He knew he was a child of God. And he knew that God lived in him. How could a young man step out there in that battlefield that day and say, you know what? Goliath has got to go down. How could he do it? Because he had a confidence Come on, somebody say confidence. He had a confidence in who he was in Christ, number one, and that the power of God lived in him. In other words, he knew he was in Christ and he knew Christ who Christ was in him. I want to encourage us all in this today. Who are you? Who are you? Well, let me tell you who you are. You're a child of God. Come on, you're, come on, everybody say, I'm a child of God. So if we're children of God, God is in us and for us. He's for you, not against you. So every Goliath that's trying to exist in your life right now, I want you to take confidence in knowing that God is for you. Hebrews chapter 10, verse 35. Let me wrap up with this scripture right here. Hebrews chapter 10, verse 35 says this. It says, do not throw away this confident, What? Trust, confident trust. New King James says, don't throw away your confidence. New Living says, your confident trust in the Lord. Remember the great reward, it. What, it, what is the it? The confident trust. The great reward that it brings you in verse 36, it goes on and says this. It says, patient endurance. Come on, somebody say, I am patiently enduring. Patient endurance is what you need now so that you will continue to do God's will. Then you will receive all that he has promised. Anybody want to receive what God has promised you today? Amen. How confident are you today? That's really where I wanted to land at today with this message. Being confident just as David was confident. His confidence didn't come because of his stature. Didn't become from his height. His confidence came because he knew who he was and who Christ was in him. Are you any different than David today? You don't have to be. But it was all, David had a perspective. He was looking forward. He knew something. He knew something that was to come. He wasn't living in fear and intimidation. 
He knew who he was. And what stood before him had to change. Do you believe that your circumstance is going to change? Come on, anybody that's got a Goliath in their life right now, it's got to change in Jesus' name. I want you all that are here in the sanctuary to stand with me. Those of you, our family that's online, I want you to just lean in for a moment. Stay connected with me. I want to pray over you. I want to pray over every one of us here today. And then I've got a confession. Here I just felt like the Lord wanted us to do it last week. I feel like he wants to do it again this week before we go. A de- declaration. David made a declaration out of his mouth what was going to happen to Goliath. I think we've got to get better at declaring into our world what God wants to do, okay? First of all, let me pray over us here today. I just want you to close your eyes right there where you're at. I just want to release something by the Spirit over you. Father, as we come to the end of this wonderful service today, Lord, I do thank you for a covenant relationship that we have with you. Lord, help us to be like David, to know who we are in you, and to know who you are in us. Father, your power lives in us. We're not weak. We're not decrepit. We're not losers. And Father, in this little story, this familiar story, Lord, we see two perspectives. One was the perspective of faith, of hope and anticipation. But the other perspective was a fear and intimidation of cowering down. So Father, whatever this message looks like in each individual life that's hearing my voice right now, Lord, I know that there's some Goliaths that are standing on the battlefield of their mind right now, the battlefield of their life. There are Goliaths. They're spewing insults. They're taunting. They're strutting before them, Lord God. It's trying to strike fear and intimidation into their hearts. Lord, may we rise up today. May we rise up with a spirit of faith. Lord, I, I think I can speak for all of us. You've shown up in our past. You showed up when a lion arose. We conquered it. You, sh- we, you, you showed up when the bear came into our life. You conquered it. So, Lord, this Goliath that stands before us right now, Lord, it's just another thing. It's just another problem. You're going to conquer it. In Jesus' name. In Jesus' name. I want us to say this confession together. Those of you who are watching online, it's on the screen. Those of you that are here in the sanctuary, you can look at the screen. Let's make this confession. I'll say it. You repeat after me. Say this. Say, thank you, Lord, for your presence and your power in my life. Thank you for loving me in every situation. I am your child and you are a loving father. Your life, your power, and your presence dwells in me. Therefore, I am more than a conqueror. Come on, say, I'm an overcomer. Come on, come on, I need you to be a little bolder with this. Come on, no disease germ or virus can live in my body. Come on, boldly say this. Say, I am immune to disease. My body is the temple of your Holy Spirit, Lord. Come on, say it. Say, I'm healthy, I'm whole, and I'm walking in your wisdom. My life is a light. It's a bright light in this dark world. Come on, say it. I will live by faith and not be driven by fear. Come on, I will do my best this week to take a real Jesus to a real world. Y'all believe that today? Come on, let's give the Lord some praise in this place today. Thank you, Father. Thanks again for listening. We hope that this message inspires, challenges, and fuels you up to take a real Jesus to a real world. If this ministry has blessed you in any way, please feel free to go online to harvestenid.com and click the giving option. We can't wait to share another message with you next week.